Right. Hey guys, uh, we now have Stefan from uh, Vinova Games and uh, he's going to be talking about Spine which is a very successful Kickstarter project and he's going to say how useful it would be to make uh, 2D games using that. Yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming. So I'm Stefan Nguyen, I'm a lead game developer at Vinova and in the next 15 minutes or so I will be your tour guide through a interesting story about how Spy a 2D skeleton tool helps solve the problems that we had and also have enhanced the quality of animations in our games. Well, with that said, I'd like to briefly introduce our studio. So, we are developers and artists from Singapore and Vietnam. Uh, we started in 2010 as uh, web and mobile consultant services, and later on, we stand to do game development. And as you can tell from the image, we'd like to see ourselves as warriors, fighting fun and you know, challenging and exciting battles in the technology world. So here's our team. We have six members, um, and we have chosen the tools to start with uh, mobile game development. Our artists have chosen uh, Photoshop, of course. Uh, I have uh, chosen Cocos 2DX as the game framework and the animators they have chosen Anim Studio. Now, you might wonder, well, why Anim Studio? Isn't it a tool dedicated for, you know, any movie creation, right? Well, you're yeah, probably right, but more than that, generally speaking, um, Anim Studio is a great 2D animation tool as well. So our animators have previous experience with it, and they claim that it's great, so that's why we have chosen it for our games. So we have from the team, um, we have picked the tools and we have plenty of ideas to start with. So we asked ourselves, should we jump right into building the games that we love or should we instead, you know, taking small steps at a time, we should build small games first to gain experience and to understand the market better. So that's what we did. So this our first game, Gaspar, is deadly simple. It's the infinite uh, flying game where you tell your devices to fly through the universe, to collect stars, to avoid obstacles, and get as far as you can. And you know, you get the idea. So for this game, uh, it's so simple. We have only one character. He has one animation only. Uh, he only flies in our game. So we needed uh, 15 frames to make smooth flying animations for him. Of course, Anim Studio and frame-based animation method uh, work perfectly for our game. The second one is bigger and also more interesting. Uh, we call it Gas Rage, where you play the gut, you have power, and you do everything it takes to prevent this little guy to come to your daughter because you know they fall in love and you don't like it because you're the gut. So, See one character, but this guy has plenty of animations, about 17 animations, and we needed 4,000 frames or images to create smooth animations for him. So 4,000 images, but those images are small, so we needed just one megabyte to create smooth animations. So perfectly acceptable for smartphone devices, right? So far, so good two games, and we are happy with Anim Studio and frame-based animations. So we have done two games. We think we had uh, experience, we had better skills. We are ready to do the game that we love. Here it is, Ultimate Arrow. So this game, based on ancient story and also our art elements of Vietnam, uh, where we are from, and it's a castle defense title, but not a strategy title, but more like an action one, where you shoot powerful arrows, where you summon defenders to protect the castle. And as you can see, we have uh, dozens of characters in this game. And basically, each character has four animations. Um, you know, she walks, stand, attacks, and die. So simple calculation, you can see there's a lot of anim animations in our game. We have been using Anim Studio and frame-based uh, 
animation method for this game, uh, we have went well for like two to three months until we create this big little guy here. Uh, this big guy, sorry. So let me introduce to you Golem, the big boss. So he's gorgeous, right? He is big and also quite heavy. For this single boss, we needed 20 megabytes of storage. And that storage translated into 50 megabytes of memory. Single boss. Now, 50 megabytes uh, plus other characters, plus memory for background, for music, for sound, you know. We quickly run out of memory at runtime, so our game will crash any time. So it's a big problem. Obviously, we need to look out for different animation methods. Now, back to basic. Yep, the problem. Back to basic. Um, from the start, we have known that there is an alternative solution for animation. It's called model animation. If you're, if you're not familiar with the term, uh, model animation is a technique that allows you to combine movements of body parts of your characters to create the overall animations. So it is not a new, you know, a new technology, no. It has been used extensively in 2D games with bigger budgets. But for indie developers like us, well, for many years, we haven't had a chance to use it because there hasn't been any publicly available tool on the market. Fortunately, finally, a guy decided to change the situation. Nathan Sweet, who is also the author of LiveGDX, the game framework, um, he and his partner proposed a project called Spy on Kickstarter earlier this year. And he describes the project as a 2D skeletal animation tool for games, specifically. So, when we heard of the project, it is very promising. We love it. But we have been running Antimero the game for several months, so we just uh, put a close watch for this tool. And when we encounter the problem that I have just described, uh, we look back to Spy, and the project has gone really well. We have tried it, and I must say that Nathan Smith and his partner has done a great job. Spy does one thing, 2D skeletal animation for game, and it does it perfectly. It has a um, unique uh, combination of features that can't be found on existing tools. I'm not saying any studio is bad, it's a great tool, but you know, we have this, the problem, so we need to find out something new, right? So our animators love it, just after you know, several hours trying it out. It has a clean, elegant UI. It has a uh, great keyframing system, allow them to create beautifully looking animations in just you know, a short period of time. So here's the workflow. First of all, you will need to prepare the images of the body parts of your character, and then you import them into Spy. Uh, you use the bone tool to create the skeletal for your character. And then you map the images to the bones. After that, you have a great keyframing system, as I have mentioned, to create beautifully looking animations. Now, here's the difference. When you export, if you generate a single JSON file, it's a pure text file that has the data of the skeletal and all the animations of your character. So you have the JSON file, and you have the images of your character, of body parts of your character. You import two of those things to the game framework, and you have beautifully looking animations. It's really it's that easy. But the question remains, does it really solve the problem that we have? The problem of disk and storage, uh, storage and memory usage? Fortunately, it does. Well, we managed to reduce half disk and RAM usage. And more than that, we managed to get much better animation. As you can see, on your left is the character with frame-based animation. And on your right is spy animation. 
much better animation with half storage and memory usage. Perfect. For more on that, because it's skeletal-based animation, it is flexible and programmable as well. Let me give you some example. So Spy have uh, generated the transition between animations at runtime. So if you have done frame-based animation, you can know that there is a small glitch between the animations. Look at the, the, uh, your lab, your lab uh, character. Look at her hand. When she lifts it up and put it down, there is, there is a small glitch. It isn't smooth, right? Now look on your right. With animation transition, uh, the hand goes smoothly. Perfect. And there's another great feature of Spy that they call it skinny. Uh, what it does is that it allows you to reuse the skeleton you have created and also the animations for, your di for another characters of your game. And at runtime, you can change weapons, you can change clothes, you can, you can change the total appearance of your character easily. What I mean by programmable is that you have the total control of the skeleton of character at runtime. So you can do cool stuff like making the character aim at the direction that you want, or create the uh, physics bodies for different parts of your character so he can interact with the environment physically. It's easy to do. Cool. Perfect. But here comes the chat up. Nothing is perfect after all, right? Because the animations are generated at runtime. Uh, Skeletal-based animation require more computation. We have done a test ourselves to see a difference. We have put uh, a lot of characters on the screen at once and measure the frame rate we can achieve. So here's the result. The blue bar corresponds to frame-based animation. And as you can see, with more than 2,000 to hundreds of uh, characters at once on the screen, you can still achieve uh, more than 60 FPS, which is perfect for gaming. But look at the red bar. It corresponds to skeletal-based animation. With just more than 50 characters, we uh, encounter frame drop, cannot get to 60 FPS anymore. So the big difference. So you can say that Frame-based animation doesn't die. It still has its own advantages, and it's good in certain circumstances. For example, when your characters are small, or you don't need really detailed or smooth animation for them, or when you have to display a lot of characters on the screen at once. So my advice is that we can use the two animation methods in a single game. Frame-based animation for small characters and skeletal-based animation for bigger ones with more complex animations. We don't have to choose, just use the best of the both worlds. Okay, so to sum up my 15-minute talk, um, Spy is the great 2D skeletal tool, 2D skeletal animation tool for games specifically. And it provides flexible, programmable, smooth, and small in terms of size animations. But it also requires more computation power, power at runtime. So the conclusion is that we should use both animation methods in a single game. So that's it. Uh, that's the end of my talk. If you want to see spy animations for your own in games, uh, you can visit our booth in Indie Showcase. We are demonstrating Android Arrow, which is extensively uh, spy animation. So, thank you all for listening. Any questions? Yes. Hi. Yeah. During the development of your game, when you came up with the multitudes of characters, uh, the soldiers, the healers, the monsters, yep. did you discover animations that you cannot do using Spine? 
Well, uh, so far we haven't found any animation that we cannot do. If you can see the game, especially the boss in our game now, uh, he has a really smooth animation. Even the chain that he has uh, on his neck does animation smoothly. So we believe that Spy is a great animation tool. Okay. Yeah. So you have that sorceress, right? And he has like some sort of a skirt below. So uh, is it like uh, Flash has this thing where you can put multiple bones on a single um, single object, a single piece of cloth, or is that uh, uh, in spine? How does that work? Uh, the sorceress. Okay, so you're asking asking about this one. No, right? no, the the sorceress. Oh, uh, oh, the healer. Okay. Uh, can healer. you repeat the question? Um, the healer, you know, you have a mage floating with like the cloth, with 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 a skirt. Um, can you go back a few more, please? Go back. Yeah, go okay. back. Okay. Uh, go back several more. Several more. Yeah, uh, it's one of your uh your frame your frame character and your spline character that one. Okay. This uh, no, one a few no. more. Yeah. This one. Yeah, this one. Okay. So uh, there's there's this floating skirt, right? Um, down there. So, um, I is that uh, those piece of cloth? Um, can you put multiple joints in them to create the smooth, flowy animation, or is it? Um, how 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 do you do that? You mean the glove that he is holding it on his hand? Yeah, the, the the cloth, the cloth, the cloth on on the skirt. Okay. Um, you mean like? Oops, I don't have. Um, uh, can you repeat it? Yeah. The skirt. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the skirt, yes. You're, you're pointing oh, at it. Oh, yeah. the skirt, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we have uh, several bones for the skirt. Uh, on a single piece of cloth? And you yep. can put several pieces of bone in it? Yeah, uh, of course you have to, um, you know, have several images for the skirt. For different parts of the skirt, several image, yeah, it's not a single image. Oh, okay. So, so that skirt in itself is a frame-based animation. Is that correct? No. Uh, I mean, so here, here the full skirt, uh, skirt, right? So we, you divided it into parts, and you have bones for each part. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess that's it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <laughs>